viable option for the dick cell controls that use a single probe, <clears throat> such as on the Norleg boxes and things like that. This is the Love Control model TS3-50010. They're made by Dwyer box. You get a nice gasket that comes with it for retaining. And then their retaining clip is really slick. It's one piece. Um, and it's real simple to get off. You just, you just push in on both of these. It slides in and slides out right on the unit. Which I like. I like this feature a lot better than on the Dixel controls. Um, here as we go, the inputs. You got your sensor on two and three. Now this unit does not come with the sensor. You have to buy the sensor separately. Power supply between five and six, and then you got a dry set of contacts. You got nine being the common, and then you got normally closed on seven and normally open on eight. And as you see the mark up here. This one is specific for 115 volts. Now, the Dwyer Love controls make a huge, huge amount of controls in this configuration, this body style, I should say, from 12 volts DC for your input supply power up to 230 volts. Um, and different outputs too. You could have, they make them with uh, dual outputs, all kinds of configurations, so you gotta be real careful which part number you purchase for which application you're going to use it for. There's a ton of different versions of this control. I think this control is hardier. Um, if when you feel it, it's super heavy and stout. <clears throat> I think it's a hardier control than the Dixdell controls or the Corrals. And the price on this thing, is, I think it was 59 bucks on Amazon. I'm going to put the, a picture of the link of it right here. over some of the data <clears throat> on this one so the operating range is from 32 degrees to 140 degrees so you're not going to want to put this inside of a freezer temperature probes you could either use the PTC or the NTC type probes um, accuracy is better than 1% of full scale it says resolution 0.1% display three digits plus a sign um, the output is good, um, one horsepower, it says 16 amps, one horsepower, 240 volts, and 10 amps, 60 lock rotor amps, maximum current per position, 16 amps. Right, this little control will do a ton of things right here, uh, manual defrost light auxiliary set up and down. <clears throat> now the programming on it's probably not the simplest, but it's a really cool stat. What you gotta do is, and I'll take you through it, we're gonna get into how to change the set points and things, and then you have all these subcodes. This is a list of your parameter subcodes. So it'll start off with CON, and that'll give you your set point, your differential, Minimum value, maximum value, night set point variation, stop compressor or fan with door open, minimum compressor stoppage time, continuous cycle time, on time of fault cycle, off time of fault cycle, minimum on time of the compressor, minimum time between two connections of the compressor. Then you get into your defrost. This is really cool. It'll do what the Dixel does. Um, <clears throat> you can have it heating or cooling. Temperature at which defrost will stop. So that's your uh, defrost termination temperature. Maximum defrost time. First hour of the day for defrosting. Delay of first defrosting. Display on defrost so you can have it freeze in the temperature when it went into defrost to trick your customer. Or you can have it show the actual temperature while it's defrosting. Display return limit, compressor drip time, intervals between defrosting, maximum defrost time, units to count the defrosting cycle, next defrost hour, next defrost in minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. You got your pro sub um, sets that'll give you your temperature scale, your ambient 
probe one calibration, your decimal point if you want to see the decimal point. Then you got your alarm set up. There's different alarms on here and this thing will buzz at you. Um, and you can go through those. I wasn't into that a whole lot. <clears throat> and then your I and I. So you can set your hours, your minutes. You can configure your digital input. You got your factory settings, your master or slave, your keypad protection. Delay time on connecting. So you can give yourself a little compressor delay for short cycling. You can have an address for serial communications. Keyboard code, type of probe. Now that's a good one right there, H6. Depending on which probes you got on your truck, if you have a PTC probe or an NTC, you can switch it up on the control. And then you got your date and then your display refresh time. Um, it gets into depth on what each subsetting is. You can read about on here and it'll get you through all those. And then <clears throat> let's get into this little bugger. So you're gonna press the set button here in the middle for eight seconds. And we'll hold it down and see what it does here. And that gets us into our code, which was zero set. Now we're into our sub parameters. Um, that's the con section. That's the defrost section. That's the pro section. That's the alarm section. And that's your I and I section. So <coughs> in the con descriptions, first one will be our set point. And I've already set it to 37.5 degrees. You can change it by going up or down. So we go back to set and then go up. RO is our differential. I got it at 3.9 degrees. You can change it by going up or down. Back to set. The next selection is R1, maximum, no, pardon me, minimum set point. So I had it set for 35, so they couldn't turn it any colder than 35. The next one, R2, is the maximum. I had it at 80, so during troubleshooting, you could play with the thermostat and see if your contacts are opening or closing. Um, if this was on a reach-in type or a walk-in <clears throat> type box, you probably want to set that a lot lower. You could come down and put like, like what would the maximum you'd want to have them be able to, you know, maximum set. You could turn it way down. You get the idea there. R4 is night set point variation. And the factory setting on that is zero. Then you can go up. The next one is F1. Stop the compressor fans with the door open. This one doesn't really have a door sensor. I think that's a generic program from these guys. There is no door sensor on this um, on this control. It might be just a generic uh, printing that they have. Minimum compressor stoppage time. You can go in minutes. <coughs> Factory set point is one. I'm going to leave it there. Um, come down to C1, continuous cycle time. Then you can go to C2, C3, C4, and so forth. That and down at the same time, it takes you back to the sub parameters. And now we can get into the defrost ones. So if I if I hit these two again right here at the same time, it takes you back to the sub parameters when you get into these. Uh, that's the pro. So we're going to set to go into the defrost mode right there. And RE is for defrost and cooling. That's what I want. D1 is temperature at which defrost will stop. I set that at 46 and a half degrees. Could probably set it lower to like 46. Then you can go to D2, maximum defrosting time. I think I had it, maximum defrost was 30 total minutes. D3, first hour of defrost, we're gonna go at 0100 hours. D4, delay of first defrost. I think we had that at zero. D5, display on defrost. I had it off. Um, <clears throat> and you got three choices. Um, off is the current temperature will be shown during defrost. On the temperature at defrost, B1, 
beginning is frozen on the display until the end of the defrost cycle. And D, D, E, F, um, you just have a D display during defrost. Ooh, that might be good. <clears throat> Let's set it for that. So off would just show you your um, actual box temp. On would freeze your temperature before defrost. And D means we are in defrost. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set it for D. I want to see that thing when it's in defrost. Display return limit. Compressor drip time is number seven. I'm on just air defrosting, so I'm gonna have that at zero. Uh, D8 intervals between defrost. Oops, D8, I got three. D11, minimum defrost time, I think I had 15 minutes. And then D14, units to count the defrost cycle. You have a choice between RT and CT. See that CT or RT? And <clears throat> RT is according to the time of the working controller, CT according to time of working of the compressor. So I want to go RT for sure. I want it to defrost based off just regular time. And that would probably be for some short cycling. And they got it in seconds. Mm -hmm. If you go 60 seconds, that's a one minute delay. And we'll go H4, address and serial communications, H5 keypad code, H6, Type of probe. <clears throat> That's an important one. Depending on if you have a failed probe out there, you could use either type of probe. So you can go between the PTC or the NTC. Um, I got it set for the PTC. H6 set PTC. And then H11 gets into some other stuff and then you get into some dates. Things like that. And then we should be able to go back here. And that gets us right back to our sub sub packages and that's what it looks like when it's calling for cooling you get the snowflake up in the corner really good solid thermostat as a viable option to the corrals or the dixel controls of that nature 58 bucks on amazon and you can use either probe with it it's got defrost defrost termination it's a good little stat <clears throat> so I thought that I'd share that with you guys. That's about it. And remember, if you're not having fun at work, you're just dying in the work van. This sandbagger right here. Sandbagger. Brrr.